Alan Plum here with a little more from Shed Engineering. But we're not uh, looking at the beam engine today. That's in abeyance at the moment. I'm thinking about uh, trying to build a boiler and convert it to steam. And it's been a bit cold out in the shed. So we're starting a new project and I'm trying to design and build uh, an N scale model railway. Um, is there a need for another um, video on uh, model railways? Uh, possibly not. But I'm hoping that it will be a little bit different uh, as with the beam engine uh, being uh, built without a, a lathe or a milling machine but still being able to have a, a, a working model. Uh, the model railway I'm trying to design is going to be semi-portable. Um, very short of room, I live in a, a small two bedroom bungalow. Uh, the loft isn't suitable, the shed is full of uh, all sorts of uh, other stuff. Um, so uh, this is where the idea has come from uh, a folding uh, model and I'm hoping that that might be of interest to other people uh, in a similar situation that haven't got a lot of room. Obviously presents uh, a lot of problems because if you look on the internet and start to sort of research then oh your baseboards have got to be really solid don't use MDF you've got to have plywood uh, you've got to have 3 by 2 battens underneath all this kind of thing or it'll expand and it'll contract uh, so on and so forth uh, so whether uh, I'll get this to work or not is, is still to be seen but the general concept uh, is to have two shallow boxes uh, approximately 10 inches deep 6 foot 6 long and 29 inches uh, wide <coughs> now I've gone, you'll have to excuse me, I've got a terrible sore throat <coughs> um, um, the concept is to have two shallow boxes that will actually fold over onto the top of each other um, thereby you could possibly have some wheels like a, um, like a suitcase so that you could wheel it around or stand it up out of the way in, in a corner um, but I've gone completely over the top. Uh, you spend £16 on sheets of plywood and so you, you fall into the trap of thinking oh I've got to use as, uh, you know, use it to the uh, best I can and not waste any um, and so I mean I've made it the full length of my lounge which is 13 foot basically um, but anyway I'm now committed I've, I've just got to go with it and try and make the best of it obviously it presents a lot of problems because um, I'm, I've got to try and stop it twisting and bowing etc etc while keeping it as light as possible so I'm using the thinnest of timbers I'm using uh, 6 mil ply uh, for the shell, the dividers are three mil ply, and then I'm having to use, or I'm trying to use building foam to try and stiffen it up. Um, <coughs> the one of the reasons for, for for the size is that I'm trying to model a section of line up in Derbyshire. Um, it's the Ambergate to, to, to Buxton line, and just to give you a rough idea, the line comes up from Derby, uh, up through Cromford, etc., where the High Peak Junction is, uh, up to Rosley. Um, now, the line, when it was being built, actually got stuck there because there was a lot of controversy over the route. They were trying to get to Manchester, and the obvious route was up the Y Valley. But the chap here at Haddon Hall, um, they do a lot of filming there actually, Pride and Prejudice and those kind of uh, Victorian dramas are often filmed at Haddon Hall. 
the Duke of Rutland says, oh no, 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 you, you, you're not coming across my land. The alternative was to go up the Derwent Valley, the Derwent Valley, further up there you've got the Lady Bower Reservoirs, where the Dambuster Squadron um, did their practice in for the uh, Dambuster raids on the German dams. But it's a huge detour around this peak, uh, and heading off in the completely wrong direction to Manchester. Um, and obviously you've got Chatsworth and the Duke of Devonshire. And he said, they said oh no, 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 I don't want that uh, crossing, uh, crossing my estate. We, we, we're not having, having that. But finally the Duke of Rutland said, um, okay, on one condition, I don't want to see the railway. It's got to be hidden. Now that was a problem for them because the, the, the trying to go along the uh, hillside and trying to gain height all the way because from Rosley uh, it carries on climbing for 15 miles up to the summit at Peak Forest. Um, so to dig a tunnel and hide the, uh, the railway line was uh, was very difficult and they had to use a method called uh, cut and cover where they just dug a trench built the stonework for the tunnel and then covered it over um, and I mean at the deepest it's only 12 foot deep I think uh, it's about a thousand and fifty yards long and so that goes around the back of Haddon Hall and as it comes out, that's where I'm starting to model from, obviously. Um, so it comes out of the tunnel. And I say one of the reasons for trying to model it is because Dad took us uh, train spotting when we lived in Sheffield. Uh, took us train spotting to Bakewell. And you've got Coombs Road Viaduct. And there's a field just at back of there where dad took us train spotting and so this was the general idea to try and get a flavour uh, or an impression of the the line climbing up the valley so it goes up the embankment to Bakewell where there's a, a station a small um, small goods yard and then I will have to terminate it uh, somewhere called Pineapple Cottages just on the outskirts of, uh, of Bakewell <laughs> I found a chap on the Engage uh, Engage forum, I think, uh, Alistair Green, ever such a nice gentleman. Uh, he was good enough to send me some uh, pictures and drawings of the footbridge and things like that, a, a, a ri proper original drawings. Uh, same with this, with the uh, the plan and layout of the. Uh, the station and the sidings so that was uh, that was very nice of him and he's actually modeling Bakewell as as well but he's doing it in double O and I mean the pictures I've seen I don't think he's got anything on the on YouTube uh, the pictures I've seen absolutely phenomenal scratch built station and uh, gush shed absolutely you know, absolutely marvellous with all the stonework and what have you. Um, I, I very much doubt my mine will be quite as impressive as that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another uh, chap I've been uh, following is uh, Dave Howarth. Um, absolutely smashing uh, layout. Loads of information. Uh, you can ask him anything and he's very obliging, lovely sense of humour, uh, loads of information. And another chap, uh, Simon, uh, again it's been very interesting watching his progress. Uh, he started off as a complete beginner, as I am. Um, and uh, it's been very interesting watching his uh, layout develop. So there's loads of uh, information out there on the internet. Um, when you're starting off sort of planning you think oh you can get this in, you can get that in and even if you try and draw it out very very carefully um, 
you never quite get the angles of the turnouts correct and you get the lines too close together and you can never scale it properly um, and so then you start to build it and you think oh well I can't get this in can't get that in one of the things I found is something called any rail now I'm the world's worst with computers I promise you um, but I downloaded the trial version of AnyRail in less than two minutes. Now, I thought you got 50 pieces before you had to buy the license. I think I've read somewhere that it's 30. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it allows you to use 30 odd pieces, let's say, uh, to, to design your uh, track or your layout before you've got to buy the license. I suppose it's possible to uh, use 30 pieces, print that out, delete the 30 and uh, do, do, do the next piece of your circuit. Um, if I move the camera up you might just be able to see a little bit of what we're trying to do. Um, up here you've got all sorts of things uh, one of which is track libraries that lists a, a whole load of manufacturers and gauges so for instance you've got HO, you've got Double O, uh, you've got uh, TT, you've got Z. I'm modelling in N so I'm clicking on N and then you know you've got Pico and all the other different manufacturers so we've clicked on Pico and we've got uh, a list of parts uh, from Pico fine scale code 55 and so this is your uh, your, your list of pieces um, if we start on a, a, a new baseboard obviously you've got your, your working area that you, you you set up and you just click on one of the one of the parts and it appears on your baseboard and that's a piece of flexi track which you can then pick up and move around you've got this little handle here so you can turn it backwards and forwards and if we zoom in a bit, might make it easier for you to actually see what's going on. You can get hold of the end of the um, flexi rail and bend it. If you stretch it too far, it turns red. It's not supposed to be that long. And then you've got some little handles, you won't be able to see them, little dots that you can that you can bend now if you bend it too much then again it turns red so you you you, you can't make a mistake you know that that curve is possible um, you can then click on a what's that that's a turnout so you can pick your turnout bring it up to the end of your flexi track and click it on if you want to disconnect it you right click ask to disconnect you can then pick it up and move it then you can say oh well I need to shorten this bit of track you can then pick it up and pop it back. Click on another piece of flexi track. That's how we're going to shorten it. Pick it up and stick it on. And again, it clicks into position. You can then get hold of the end of it and move it round. You get these little handles so you can adjust it. click on uh, 
another turnout. Let's pop that in there. And let's have a another one, etc. etc. And so at least they're all in proportion, they're all at the right angle, and whatever you design, you're capable of actually um, building it. You also get uh, a shopping list, you can print all your parts out and get a list of parts. And if we... It's asking me do I want to save the changes to this plan. No thank you. This is uh, the layout I've uh, presently got. Uh, split in half down the middle obviously. We're starting off at um, Haddon Tunnel, coming out of Haddon Tunnel, across Coombs Road Viaduct, uh, up the uh, embankment and hillside to Bakewell Station where there's a, a road bridge station and um, the uh, sidings uh, etc. And then it rejoins the main line and we shall have to terminate it at a road bridge <coughs> just on the outskirts of, um, of Bakewell. Um, as I say, to, to try and get that in, anything like the original where you've got these uh, long sidings, obviously I've had to uh, compress everything down and so this any rail software uh, has been well absolutely I, I don't think I could have done it without because you can you can adjust things and so on so that's the best I've been able to come up with um, Alistair Green uh, on the uh, narrow gauge uh, end gauge forum also pointed out that I'd made a couple of mistakes that I haven't got a head shunt um, so when I was uh, operating it would have been difficult so uh, that was good and my brother also uh, pointed out it would be a good idea to have um, loco spurs I'll probably just have one siding coming all the way down but with little spurs on each end uh, I've clicked on the wrong plan I think I've got one with that on the idea being is that you can have a uh, let's say a, a northbound uh, passenger train that comes up disappears comes round you bring it into one of the sidings disconnect the loco and park it in the spur and at this end you've got another spur where you've got a different loco that can back onto the rake of coaches and before you know it you've then got a southbound passenger train uh, being pulled by a different loco so that's the general uh, setup uh, another little useful item is um, too far is that I wanted to know where uh, the main line was here when I was uh, starting construction uh, whereabouts it was so I needed a measurement from the edge of the baseboard so again up here you've got uh, insert uh, insert add ruler etc etc and so you've got you've got this ruler that you can put in and you can actually measure from uh, the edge of your baseboard grab the end of the ruler grab the end of the ruler and to the track it is uh, 30.597 centimeters so again if you're trying to measure anything um, it's absolutely uh, superb in that respect so I can highly recommend that I think the license was £35 or £38 um, and I say if you've got a complicated layout 
it might well be worth uh, thinking about and save a lot of uh, time in the long run because at least what you then design you know uh, you're capable of actually building so uh, that's what we're trying to achieve um, whether uh, we can actually do it is a different matter if you want to follow me into the lounge then uh, I'll show you uh, how far I've got and so we have a scene of total devastation This is where you definitely need a wide angle lens. So there's uh, one end of the layout. And one box. And if I come down this end turn around you might be able to see the other one just there so as I was saying one of the major problems is keeping it as light as possible and so the shell is simply built out of six millimeter external ply with the thinnest of timbers in the corner and they have just been uh, glued together and I've used a staple gun to do the basic construction now I'm not going to give you a whole list of tools that you need uh, for the job if you're thinking of starting to build a model railway then I'm sure you uh, I've got a good idea what tools you'll need so as I say it's very simple construction just using the 6mm ply and then as you can see I've got ribs across made out of 3mm ply and down in the bottom I'm using um, building foam which hopefully will stiffen it up the ribs that are going across are obviously supporting the track bed because I'm uh, modeling uh, the incline coming up from Combs Road Bridge. The numbers there, they were just references to the uh, millimeters uh, as it came came up because you've got to be very careful you don't get the incline uh, too steep. Cutouts in the um, supports there, one for wiring and again for lightness trying to keep the whole thing as light as possible now the construction has just been uh, a mastic a mastic type glue called grip fix or grip fill grip fill I think it is and uh, you can put a bead of mastic all the way down I let that dry and then put another bead down and you get quite a quite a nice bond so that's the basic construction um, I didn't really want these coming up at this point these are just flat fields but obviously you've got to have a bit of artistic license um, I needed to support the sides of the box As we come down 
that's where uh, Coombs Road Viaduct will be and having the foam in the bottom allows you to um, get some contours and I shall be able to dig that away and then the track bed continues on to where Haddenall Tunnel will be and that will hide the turning circle at the bottom cutouts in the side for access obviously I might have to have some sections of scenery that lift off and that is the track bed climbing back up and obviously the dividers or partitions are going to uh, make the hillside Now there's a lot of uh, talk and hype about uh, underlay using cork or foam etc. Uh, you've got to got to have some uh, sound deadening uh, on your baseboards. Uh, whether all that hype is actually true or not because there's some very renowned modelers who uh, don't use it at all. Because I'm using uh, very very thin plywood I did think that it would almost be like uh, the sound box of a guitar so I am actually using some black neoprene rubber uh, it's only a couple of mil thick and I bought that in I think it's a, a, a three sheets from Hobbycraft so as you can see over at the back that's just been glued onto the plywood and here at the front uh, I've just roughly painted it the idea being that when I come to ballast the track I don't need to put a massive amount of ballast on if there's some very sparsely ballasted portions um, then you won't get the black rubber showing through so as we come up from Coombs Road Viaduct the track bed should continue to rise all the way up towards Bakewell station and then obviously we've got the problem area of where the layout will fold in half and so at that point I've uh, tried to make some three little clamps which will clamp the sleepers in position and hold the track nice and firm so the idea is that those clamps will hold the track firm and they're uh, bolting the track down to a piece of aluminium angle and at each side of that angle I've got a, a set screw which uh, you can raise or lower so I'm hoping that the height of the track can be then adjusted should there be any kind of movement and they're just simple little squares of aluminium 
um, filed out so that you've got a little recess that will uh, clamp onto the onto the sleepers and as I said we'll just have to see whether that works or not and then at either side you've got the hinge arrangement for one box to fold over onto the top of the other one Obviously you can see I'm dreadfully uh, short of room If I just move the curtain back Move my ruler I'll try and demonstrate how one section folds over onto the top of the other one. And then hopefully uh, you could possibly have a, a, a set of uh, wheels that would slot in so you've got something like a, a huge traveling suitcase um, but uh, is, is, is light enough to uh, move around or stand up. So obviously that's the hinge arrangement, one at either side and then we've got aluminium dowels, one, two, three, four, which locate into corresponding holes along the bottom. So I would hope that there's going to be very little sideways movement and we can get a good track joint And there she is, opened up again. So now we're just starting to uh, solder the dropper wires to the sections of track. Now again with DCC you're told that uh, you need as many dropper wires as possible rather than just relying on the fish plates to join sections together and so because I've used uh, the uh, set track radiuses I'm putting um, dropper wires on for each section and I can tell you it's not been easy soldering them because my problem has been that when you try to solder the dropper wires you end up melting the sleepers
but I will try and show you how I've got round that. It might be a little bit primitive, but uh, it could be useful to somebody out there. So it doesn't uh, look much at the moment, but that's uh, progress so far. And in the next video I'll try showing you how I solder the dropper wires onto the track because I've had major problems melting the uh, melting the sleepers. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found something interesting. And uh, thank you for watching.